Not that. No, anything but writing, said the writer. I'm just going to do this video off the cuff. If you want to read my article on it, my Substack is linked down below. Um, and you can just read that there. Just want to talk about some things that I've been writing about and talking about on the stream lately, which is that writers hate to write. People like doing things, but writers enjoy having written, which is really weird. I enjoy the writing process personally, and that doesn't mean I enjoy every aspect of it exactly the same, or I like every aspect of it, or on any given day, I like every aspect of it the same as I did the previous day. You know, sometimes I don't like drafting. Sometimes I really enjoy it. Uh, same thing with editing or something like that. Um, but I enjoy the process. Moreover, I really like the process because it's communicative. And I think this is something that gets lost in a lot of discussion with AI. So if I have an AI write a book, I'm not communicating anything, right? The AI is making a product supposedly that somebody wants to read, but it's not me communicating anything to another person. It's a computer talking. Is the, does the computer have an intent to the talking? Well, no, it's just constructing things that I ordered it to construct, right? Um, so this is the, the thing that's lost with a lot of the art discussion is that it's communicative, right? So why would I want to not write my books? But something I discovered when I got into indie publishing was that there is a huge cohort of um, indie publishers, really, um, writers, indie authors, who will do anything to not write their own books. <laughs> You know, they'll come up with as many different schemes as they can to avoid writing books. Having that, that was, those are the first people to jump on AI were these indie authors. Like we can, I can have the AI draw me a cover. I can have the AI write the book. Uh, maybe I'll edit it. And then I can finally publish 20 books a year and, and get up to that speed that's necessary to get my 20 books, the 50K thing going. All right, 20 books in this, you know. Um, they were the first ones to jump on it. And it was because they've never enjoyed writing. They've only enjoyed the idea of being an author. This also happens on the flip side with, with people who want to be trad published, like aspiring authors. How do you aspire to do it? Just write, write. And then oh, it's like, they want to, uh, uh, what do agents want to see? Right. It's like, oh man, I've been, they worked, spent five years on their manuscript, two years finding an agent, another two years, maybe like rewriting the book and maybe it finally gets published like 10 years later, man. I, I can't delay gratification that much. I got to publish before them. They're always avoiding writing too. You know, they have the same thing, but they both, why do they want to be a writer so much if it's such a chore, if it's such torture to write a book? And the answer is because they like the prestige of being an author. And I've experienced this a little bit. Like if I meet someone at a party and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I write books. And they're like, whoa, you wrote a book. I'm like, I've written, yeah, I've written a few books. How many books have you written? written like 30 published um 20 it's like what how have you written so many books like i don't know you sit down and you write and then eventually a book comes out you can read my book keys to prolific creativity which basically says like just do this every day and, and your projects will get done and then overcome the overcome the, your your little belief that you suck and just publish it so that people can read it and enjoy it yeah, there's a prestige that comes with being an author. People choose high prestige jobs over high paying jobs all the time. It's why they like to be college professor instead of, you know, investment banker. Even though they're very smart, they could probably like, I don't know, put their intellect to more lucrative uses. But there's a lot of prestige that goes with being a college professor. Um, so that's why a lot of people end up choosing things like that. And author is one of those things. I could be a prestigious author. Problem is if you're an indie author, there's no real prestige with that. No one knows who you are. You don't show up on the New York Times bestseller list. Your book's not at Costco. How do you get the prestige from your friends and family? Well, you become a successful author by selling lots of copies of your books, supposedly. And so how do you sell lots of copies of your books? Well, you start digging into it. You're like, oh, you got to write a lot of books. You got to target this micro genre. And then, yeah, real quickly, it turns into what's the what's the quickest way and the that I can get from, you know, I'm making a product for this hyper generic, you know, this was the thing, right? Um, I didn't get into indie publishing for any real reason other than I had to. 
I just was the only option for me to publish my books. Um, I wrote a book called Muramasa Blood Drinker that I got good feedback on would never be published. At the time, this was the early 2010s. This was the 2010s. I didn't know anything about indie publishing or publishing in general. I was following the advice that writers who made it in the 90s were giving me. You find an agent, you talk to the agent, they'll rep your manuscript, you'll get it published. Like, okay, I have this process in mind for how a book gets published. And then it's like, this book will never be published. I'm like, but I spent all this time writing it and it's really cool and I think people would really like it. You know, it's got like everything in it. It's got samurais and seppuku and demons and blood and gore and horror and all kinds of fun things and mystery. No one's going to publish it. You're a white guy writing. There's no such thing as samurai fiction as a genre. It doesn't fit in any of our other genres. It's not a romance. It's not a fantasy. It's not really historical fiction. It doesn't fit into anything. And you're also a white male writing Japanese characters. That's a no-go. So my only option was to publish the book myself. So I learned to do that. That's how I got into it. And so I thought, me being an outsider writing non-mainstream work, that the indie sphere would be full of weirdos like me writing non-mainstream books, writing weird fiction. Nope. Turns out indie authors, at least the successful ones, the ones that, you know, pop their heads above the sand. Um, you know, like I'm imagining a little prayer dog. Why? <laughs> uh, those indie authors are hyper generic. They're like the most generic writers, and that's the goal. The goal is to find a microgenre and to hit every trope as hard as you can to make sure that the audience buys 20 books of your 20 book series so that you can make money, and then you're gonna spend you know $5,000 a month on advertising, whatever it is. And uh, hey, I, I, don't really, I don't really do that. I don't wanna be hyper generic. I wanna write books that are cool. I wanna communicate something to people. I wanna be outside the box. What's the point of being uh, an outsider unless you're going to do things that are outside the box? You know, I should just be true. I should should have just thrown away Muramasa and written some lit, lit fiction book if I really cared about being trad published. And then I could have avoided this whole, you know, this whole the difficulty of learning all the publishing business. Anyway, that's why I got into it. And that's why I learned it. And I've taught everything that I've learned. I teach through this channel. And I'm so happy to communicate it to other people. Um, but yeah, that's what I learned about indie fiction is that most of the successful authors and people trying to be successful are trying to follow you a formula of being hyper generic to try to sell books, uh, doing, giving people exactly what they expect and what they want um, in such a way that you can milk each individual reader for as much money as possible. And in the process of doing that, what ends up getting lost is the idea of writing as communication, that it's like some expression of myself. I'm trying to communicate something to another human being. So of course, it's you could just replace that with AI. Why not do it? You could put out twice as many books and therefore maybe make twice as much money. And before there was AI, there was ghostwriters because I know these guys are getting like ghostwriters from the Philippines and shit to write their books. You know it. Like when the style is all over the place, there's no stylistic consistency. Or like with the Mark Dawson um, controversy that I talked about on stream, he allegedly just plagiarized whole sections of the book and people didn't even pick up on it for 10 years, which lets you know that those generic readers, if they exist to the extent that they exist, are not picking up on stylistic inconsistencies uh, enough to think maybe this is plagiarized from another author. I learned about the plagiarism and my first thought was like, that seems like way more work than just writing new sentences. Like, ah, oh, let me go get a better written sentence out of a book. Like. Why pause what I'm doing? I'll just write a new sentence. It's right there. The document's open. I'll just write a new sentence. But yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of indie authors are like, how do I get, okay, I'll put up more books. I'll write an outline because I know stories. And stories are, you know, there's a format to stories. And if you follow the format, it's going to be a good story. I'll write this thing. I'll have a co-writer. I'll pay a co-writer to write it and we'll put it out. That's why if you see like lots of co-writers, 
my assumption is that the co-writer wrote the book and the big name just gave him a story outline and then like maybe edited the book, gave him feedback suggestions uh, that really the co-writer wrote the book. Um, that's my assumption. That doesn't mean it happened in every case, but it's my assumption. And then I have assumptions that like with Mark Dawson, maybe he didn't pick up on the plagiarism because a ghostwriter did it, right? So anything but writing. I realized that these were the people that wanted AI because they actually don't care about writing books. They want to be known as an author. And the truth is they probably make more money marketing something else, a widget that people need. Why not? You're doing a $100,000 a year job with all this advertising, with all these keywords to target. You could sell an actual product and probably make more money or work for a company doing that role and get paid more money than what you make um, doing all the indie fiction marketing uh, that you have to do, which is a tremendous amount of work. Then you just look at it. It's like, I don't want to spend all my time doing Amazon ads. It's not writing, right? <laughs> it's like marketing. They're like, yeah, I'm an author. So I spend my time doing Amazon ads and getting ghostwriters from the Philippines to write my books for me. What? Anyway, it's just something that I really don't like about that side of it. And the trad side of it is just people avoiding writing their books because they actually don't like it, but they just wish that they could be a published author because they admire published authors and they think it would somehow validate themselves and things like that. It's two people trying to serve different emotional needs for validation. One of them is going to do it by by either actually being successful or pretending to be successful. And then the other person's going to do it by getting the approval of New York publishers to say, you are really special and your book is special and you're a special person and we're going to publish it and you've really made it. You've made it as somebody, even though most authors never make even a part-time income from their books. It's just how it is, guys. It's a tough market. So if it's such a tough market, why not just market another product that people want and need that fulfills their needs, right? I don't know. That's my thought about it. Just my thought about it with that. Yeah. So leave me your thoughts down below. Do you like writing? <laughs> Do you hate writing, but wish you were an author? Stop and think about like yourself with that. Do you want the title of author or do you enjoy communicating? Do you enjoy writing books and coming up with stories? Because that's what I enjoy. I enjoy creating. And that's why I wrote, that's why I'm, maybe I'm not as prolific as other people. That's why I wrote this book on your creative process. It's all about mastering the process to get your, to get your stuff done. So Leave me your thoughts down below. You can, of course, support me at patreon.com slash David V. Stewart, ko-fi.com. It's over. David V. Stewart. Um, you can join the Discord server with those by joining those memberships. Same thing with the channel membership. And you can also um, get books that way. So if you are at like one of the lower tiers, everybody gets this book for free and then a rotating book every month. So easy way to get in on my reading. Plus you get access to the written files for all of the live writes. I'm writing a book live this year. That's one of what I'm going to be doing for the first few months on the right stream, as well as I'm going to add a stream Saturday, I think. So you get all that kind of stuff and you can see me write live. If you stop in for the live streams, what does it look like when some dude writes a book live? I think it's probably pretty boring, but it's fun to have company. And as well as someone looking over my shoulder going like, mm, you can't really stop working now. You got to write some more words right now, right? It's like, okay, good. You know, uh, I enjoy writing, but you know, it's, it's sometimes good to have like, oh, okay, where I can't just, just, I have to really think of the right sentence. I can't just take a break now. I got to do it, you know? So that's always good. A little bit of, a little bit of extra motivation from people watching you to do an extra good job. Have a good one, folks, and I'll see you all next time.